yippee ki movie lovers, I'm Jan, and in this video I'm explaining the shocking ending of The Invisible Man and the thrilling twists and clues that led to that big moment. Plus I'll reveal how the finale connects to the new Invisible Woman film. Spoilers of course for the movie, so take care if you haven't seen it yet. The film's first jaw-dropping surprise happens when Cecilia is at dinner with her sister Emily, and out of nowhere the Invisible Man slashes Emily's throat and pins the murder on C by placing the knife in her hand. Leading up to this, Adrian has been slowly making Cecilia look and feel crazy, first faking his own death, then stalking and terrorising her at her friend's house. One of the first big clues foreshadowing Emily's murder comes when Cecilia is alone in the house with the Invisible Man, and she decides to call Adrian's cell phone which buzzes from the attic above. C climbs up there, and after finding the phone together with a large kitchen knife, a text message pops up with the single word surprise. She can't figure out why there's a knife there, but the sign that it's a future murder weapon is how it's already bagged like it's a piece of evidence. When she's later locked up and drugged in a mental hospital for the crime and what everyone thinks are her delusional ravings, an invisible Adrian whispers, Surprise! Tormenting her that he had this moment planned all along. The word and idea of surprise pays off in an even even bigger way in the movie's final twist. When C goes to have dinner with Adrian, he still thinks he's in control, and tells her, I know you better than anyone else in the world. That shouldn't come as a surprise. The way Adrian pauses, smiles, and then emphasises the word surprise is his way of letting her know that it was indeed him who killed her sister and who's been torturing her, not just his brother. His constant denials at the dinner table prior to this are yet another example of how he gaslights her. And so, sick of his continued abuse, Cecilia excuses herself to the bathroom, then off camera sneaks into the bedroom closet where she recovers the invisible suit she hid there earlier. Invisible now, she walks back to the dinner table and aware of the security cameras makes him slit his own throat, mirroring the way he killed her sister. As he dies, she whispers the word surprise, showing that she's turned his own tricks back on him. By the way, notice how Cecilia decided they eat steak rather than the sushi or pasta she was also offered for dinner, so that Adrian would be holding the knife she needed to kill him. And a clue that C would decide to wear the invisibility suit against Adrian was hinted at in the hospital on a poster titled You Don't Have to Face Yourself Alone. The poster features two silhouetted figures facing away from each other, and while it's obviously aimed at people with mental health issues, maybe bipolar for example, it also plays on the idea of C using an alternate, invisible persona to deal with Adrian, as well as the fact that we soon discover that a second man donned the invisible suit. Indeed, doubles and mirrors are a recurring theme in the movie, with Cecilia seeing a reflection of herself in the bathroom mirror just before she puts the invisible suit on to kill Adrian. Part of the setup for Cecilia hiding the second invisibility suit in the bedroom closet comes in the scene where she goes for a job interview and the interviewer says, We both know the value of closet space, which points forward to the film's finale, as well as back to the start of the movie where C hid a go bag in her closet to help her escape Adrian. As we discover in another twist, Adrian's brother Tom was also his accomplice, helping him fake his own death and even once wearing the suit. Tom claimed he'd been controlled by Adrian all his life, and while that may be true, he still lied to Cecilia, feeding her false information, essentially gaslighting her as well. Only thing more brilliant then inventing something that makes you invisible is not inventing it, but making you think he did. When C tells Tom he's just a jellyfish version of his brother, she means he lacks a spine, but the fact that jellyfish are known for their translucent or transparent look means it's also an intriguing nod to the fact that Tom will later wear the invisible suit. Tom was always quite shady from the start, knowing things he shouldn't, such as where C was living. Remember she received the letter about Adrian's will at James's house, probably because when Emily saw the news about his death she ignored C's instructions not to go there, and Adrian was tracking or watching her just as C predicted. Tom also knew that C had set up a bank account for Sydney's college fund, again, something that should be private. Most likely is that while Adrian was stalking Cecilia as well as breaking into her laptop, he was keeping tabs on her and relaying the info back to his brother. As the saying goes, the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist, an idea that perfectly fits the character of the Invisible Man. Even at the end of the movie, Adrian pretends he was never the Invisible Man and that it was his brother Tom who was responsible for everything that happened. Adrian flips the truth so far that he even claims he's the victim and that Tom was controlling him. 
The movie's writer-director Lee Winnell has said that Adrian's emotional intelligence and charm is a classic trait of narcissists and sociopaths who he describes as scientists of the human condition, who can break someone down very quickly, assess their needs and desires and play to that. Which is why Adrian is good at reading people. For example, when they were still together, he figured out without her even saying a word that she wanted to leave him. And his reaction was that of a sociopath. Wherever you go, I'm standing right by and you. I know you better than anyone else in the world. When Cecilia was wearing a wire at the end and trying to get him to confess, you could sense he probably knew what she was doing, and on top of wanting to gaslight her as usual, that was another reason he refused to admit anything openly. Likewise, his earlier comment that you're the only person in the world who gets to see my handshake was a tactic to let her know that only she knows the truth about him and no one else would believe her. He also knew she was taking birth control pills in secret so switched them out behind her back, essentially drugging her so she'd get pregnant, quite likely with diazepam given the very high level of it in her blood. As Cecilia unwittingly continues to take the drugs, Adrian breaks into her email, sending a threatening, incriminating message from her to her sister, which later provides the motive for Emily's murder. Adrian is constantly isolating C from the few people already in her life, as well as any new people she comes into contact with. He also sabotages her job interview that could make her financially independent of his money by emptying her portfolio briefcase. And he later puts those architect plans that he took in the attic, together with the kitchen knife, taunting her about what he can do to her. He also sees himself as an amazing godlike figure, the master of everyone and everything around him. When they were a couple, he was such a control freak that he decided everything Cecilia did, wore and even said. Even his dog Zeus wears a shock collar with tech of Adrian's own design. And let's talk about the name he chose for that dog. The ancient Greek deity Zeus is the king of all the other gods and men, which again highlights how Adrian imagines himself as a supreme master and god of all. And it's no coincidence that the location of Adrian's house is Celestial Drive. As a genius inventor, Adrian uses his invisibility technology to psychologically and physically terrorise Cecilia and those around her, to make her appear unhinged and ultimately drive her back to him. When C asks the Invisible Man why he cares about her, when with all his wealth and power he could have almost anyone, the answer that Tom later gives her is that Adrian needs her because she doesn't need him, and that nobody's ever left him before. Winella said that when he was writing his first draft of the movie, he felt that the themes of gaslighting, domestic abuse and not being believed, or feeling like there's an unseen threat, would perfectly fit a modern version of the classic Invisible Man villain. And Winnell went on to say that the horror genre lends itself to depicting the worst of society's problems because it can illustrate our collective fears. Cecilia's character is an example of what it's like for a woman to be driven to feel crazy in the wake of abuse when no one around you believes what you're saying. Ultimately, as C couldn't make Adrian admit his guilt, the legal options for getting justice weren't available, so he would have continued to terrorise her as the Invisible Man if she didn't stay with him. Which is why Winnell says that with the ending, he decided to give Cecilia some catharsis, as he wanted her to feel free. And so as C walks out of Adrian's house, free at last, we can see from her open bag that she's still got her invisibility suit, meaning she could easily be in a sequel or possibly in Universal's The Invisible Woman movie, which is already in development with Elizabeth Banks directing and starring as the title character. I wonder if the film will feature Banks donning the suit and using it to violently deal with people who've evaded justice such as abusers. After all, according to The Hollywood Reporter, the tone of the new film is Thelma and Louise meets American Psycho. Although Universal have abandoned their dark universe which was going to connect their catalogue of classic monsters, it seems there is potential for some sort of crossover, even a very small one, if the studio did decide it wants to make it happen. If they did want to connect the two movies, then Cecilia could, for example, supply Banks' is Invisible Woman with the tech for the Invisible Suit, or they could even team up. Either way, as Cecilia shows in The Invisible Man, stalking is a very real danger in real life and online. As well as covering up your webcam like Cecilia did to stop potential hackers spying on her, you can also stop anyone including your own internet service provider from tracking you online with a virtual private network. A VPN helps protect your privacy by encrypting your internet connection and preventing your ISP, government agencies or malicious hackers from reading your emails, private messages or knowing which websites you're visiting. 
Racing, which is a perfect intro for this video's sponsor, NordVPN, who offer one of the world's best virtual private networks. Here at Flix in the City, we've tested several VPNs and Nord is one of the best and fastest. It has over 5,000 servers to choose from in over 60 countries, and when connected to Nord, we were still able to get blisteringly fast download speeds. Unlike many free VPNs, Nord has a no-log policy, meaning it doesn't record or retain details of your online activity when you're connected to its service. And if you're a video junkie, NordVPN can help you bypass geo-restrictions or censorship on content not available to view in your country. Just pick a server in another location and browse the internet as if you were there. NordVPN even works with Netflix, plus you can connect up to six devices at the same time, including your laptop and phone, so you can keep your mobile devices safe whenever you're travelling and using public Wi-Fi. For a limited time, NordVPN are offering all our viewers up to 70% off new subscriptions and a bonus subscription absolutely free. Just visit nordvpn.com slash flicks or tap the link in the video description to access the offer. That's nordvpn.com slash flicks for a huge 70% discount and an additional subscription period for free. So what do you think of The Invisible Man, the twists and the ending? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, then a thumbs up and a share are hugely appreciated. Tap left to watch my next horror movie video, or tap right for another video you're sure to like. Thanks for watching and see you next time, yippee ki movie lovers!